This case takes place on the 11th of April 2020 in Jacksonville, Florida. Leah Baker was a 29-year-old mother of one. Leah seemed to have no problems when she was growing up. She was a good student throughout the majority of her school years with no signs of any serious mental health issues. It wasn't until she became a senior in high school that her family noticed that something was wrong. She dropped out of high school and in the years following, she was in and out of multiple mental health facilities and was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia and PTSD. Due to her mental health issues, it was decided that for Leah's safety and for the safety of others, she should be put into a safe house, where she could be monitored closely and where help would be more readily available. She also lost custody of her daughter. On the 23rd of March 2020, the police were called to the location where Leah was staying at. She had been making some threats that she was going to seriously harm herself. It was clear that she had suffered some form of mental break and was having delusions. When the police arrived, they spoke to Leah calmly. They could see she had black marks on her face and the person who was living with Leah explained to the officers that she had been hitting herself in the face. Leah began to accuse the officers of being killers in disguise and shouted that their badges were fake. She then began to record the interaction with the police on her mobile phone, saying that they were going to take her away to an undisclosed location and murder her. The officers cuffed Leah so she wouldn't be able to hit herself or anyone else, and took her to the hospital without any violence taking place. Only a few days later, on the 11th of April 2020, the police received another call from the house regarding Leah. Leah's housemate had called the police because she was refusing to take her medications and her behaviour was becoming more erratic. Elizabeth Metchling was one of the first officers who arrived on the scene. She gets out of her car, walks towards the house and knocks on the door. Immediately, Leah emerges from the house wielding a large knife. The officer raises her arms in self-defense but is taken completely by surprise. Leah was able to slash the officer's arm as she was retreating but thankfully, she didn't cause any fatal injuries. The whole ordeal was captured on the officer's body camera and is available to view online. It is an incredibly distressing video so I will not be able to show it on YouTube as the situation gets extremely more violent. The officer steps back, withdraws her firearm, calls for backup and tells Leah to drop the knife and get on the ground. Leah does indeed drop the knife, but as the officer orders her to get on the ground again, Leah steps forward to pick up the knife and lunges towards the officer. The officer then fires two shots in self-defense. Both of the bullets missed Leah, but this seems to be enough to make her stop for a moment. A sergeant who was on the scene with the officer runs over with their firearm drawn, telling Leah to get on the ground now. Instead of doing this, Leah charges towards the sergeant. It's at this point that the two officers fire a number of shots into Leah, causing her to fall on the ground. Many more officers arrive on the scene and cordon off the area. Despite taking several bullets, Leah is still very much alive and can be seen in the video sat on the ground still clinging onto the knife. Leah is then surrounded by officers who tell her to drop the weapon, an order she continues to ignore. This could be due to her being in a delusional state, due to shock, or both. Either way, Leah refuses to drop the knife. A canine officer is then brought in, with a plan that the dog will be able to distract Leah enough that they will be able to grab the knife from her and then arrest her and take her to hospital for medical treatment. But the reality of what actually happened was a little more brutal. The canine comes in from behind and bites Leah on the back of the leg. This catches her completely off guard and causes her to drop the knife. Officers then run in to grab the knife, leaving Leah unarmed. The canine continues to grip onto her leg and Leah begins to repeatedly punch the dog in a bid to get it to release. The canine officer shouts at Leah, demanding that he stop attacking her dog at once. The canine officer then walks towards Leah and kicks her in the face, which is believed to have broken her jaw and other bones in her face. 
The kick from the officer results in Leah's head going back and she is seen laid out on the ground. Leah seems to be very much incapacitated. But then, another officer pulls out his taser and begins to tase Leah as she lays on the ground. All the while, the dog is still latched onto her leg. An officer then shouts, she has guts coming out of her stomach. Everyone be careful. Even though Leah is laid out on the road and seems to be incapable of fighting back, the canine officer allows his dog to viciously bite and drag Leah into the middle of the road. At this point, she has been shot numerous times, been set on by a dog, kicked in the face, and tased. Another officer then suggests that she be tased again, even though she is no longer resisting arrest. Four officers then pin Leah down and cuff her. She is brought to her feet and forced to walk towards the ambulance that is parked around 20 meters away, all while her intestines are protruding from her stomach. In the police footage, Leah's abdominal region is blurred, so if you do decide to watch the video, you won't see anything coming from her stomach. You can, however, see her face, which is covered in blood. Leah was taken to hospital. The doctors tried to save her life, but her injuries were too great. She passed away shortly after arriving. Leah's mother, Charity Baker, arrived at the hospital not too long after she passed away, but was not allowed to see Leah's body due to the state that she was in. After the death of her daughter, Charity spoke with the media. She said, I cannot condone my daughter's actions, but at the same time, I fought with different hospitals to get her the help she needed. I thought she was in a safe space. I never thought the police would kill my daughter. Following the whole ordeal, an investigation was launched to determine if what happened was justified. In August of 2020, the state attorney's office ruled that the shots fired by the officers were justified. I completely understand how terrifying it must be to be an officer in some situations, especially in the United States. And in these situations, you face the reality that it's either you or them. And if you haven't served as an officer, it's hard to know how you'd react despite all the training. However, once you see what some of the officers do to Leah, you can't help but think that the way they treated her was extremely excessive. Leah's mother Charity has criticized how the police handled the situation. The house in which Leah was living was known to house those with mental health issues and the police had been called multiple times to that address due to Leah's behavior. The officer who was sliced with a knife was not notified that the house she was going to was home to someone with mental health issues and delusions. Leah's housemate told of how her mental health had been in decline in the lead up to the shooting. She said, I tried to get her to take her medications and she just wouldn't. As the days went on, she got really, really bad. Leah's mother is hoping that the police change their tactics when dealing with people with mental health issues. She now advocates for proper communication within the police so they know exactly who they will be dealing with upon arriving at the location. She has also suggested that officers are accompanied with counselors in these kinds of situations, as she believes this will reduce further incidents occurring. She also hopes that police adopt a piece of tech called a bolt wrap instead of using a gun. The bolt wrap is a handheld device that deploys a Kevlar cord with grappling hooks, which zip around a suspect's legs and arms. This case is an incredibly divisive one online. Some people believe the police had every right to do what they did, whilst others advocate for officers to use non-lethal weapons. Whichever way you look at it, there's no denying that this case highlights a better need for mental health facilities. And tragically, on October the 23rd, 2020, Leah's brother Jared took his own life. The two were incredibly close, and he struggled to deal with the loss of Leah.